I'm Hannah and welcome back to my swimming painting class. I hope you found all your supplies without difficulties and you're excited to get started today. By the way, before and after the first session, did you enjoy the sound of 12 string kayagum played by South Korean foremost player Hwang Byung-gi? It may be played a little bit longer than expected, but I wanted to set the tone for the class as a part of your preparation. In my earlier introduction, I mentioned that you can explore noble characters of Jansumi ink painting through artistic expressions. The reason I said was because the artists who practiced this art form in ancient times. These artists were distinguished scholars, government officials who enjoyed in their leisure time playing music instruments, painting or composing poetry to express their intellectual, political and artistic integrity. These are called the scholar painters or poet painters from whom we have inherited our standards today. And allied with the Chinese calligraphy, this art form was considered as one of essential accomplishments of the educated man as a well-rounded person. So I hope you also position yourself as those scholars with the attitude of expressing who you are, what you have inside of you rather than focusing too much on learning those techniques themselves, although those are important as well. It is important to learn the proper way to hold and move the brush because you could ruin a line and also form a bad habit otherwise. In Sumi painting, the brush is regarded as an extension of art's will. So the brush and art's heart and the mind must be unified as one in execution. Now, let me show you how to hold the Sumi brush. First, hold the brush in the middle of the stem, about three inches from the bristles. Grasp it between the index finger and the thumb. Place the middle finger just below the index finger with a gentle touch that you could hold an egg inside the palm without crushing the shell. This will enable you to twirl the brush slightly without losing control. In holding the brush upright, the placement of the fingers is quite similar to the position for holding chopsticks. Do not hold it tightly but in a relaxed manner. A tight grip will prevent free movement by the entire arm action. Remember that only by using the whole arm is it possible to produce the strong but light touch essential to good sumi painting. And the straight posture for the whole body is necessary. And the hand and arm should be always raised off the paper for the free arm action. It is the movement of the entire arm responding to the artist's thoughts that guides the brush, not the finger and wrist action. Let's have some line practice. This will help you learn about the various interactions and effects by the sumi ink, rice paper, and the brush while we practice holding the brush in a proper way. Place the rice paper, keep in mind that the smooth side is the front. To get the desired effects, you need to use the right side of the paper. In this line practice, we will keep moving the brush in a straight line at the same speed. In this way, we can observe the various shades and textures of sumi ink in brush strokes from dark and wet to light and dry at the same time. Drip some ink carefully on your palette. Now, pick up your brush and dip it in the water and transfer some water onto your palette and gently dilute the ink. As I mentioned before, this liquefied ink has very intense dark value, so you always need to dilute it with water before using it. 
In this practice, we want to see the various shades of ink from dark to light, so we will fully charge the brush with plenty of ink on the palette to start with the dark ink. Before transferring the brush to the paper, wipe off the excess of the ink on the side of the palette. Hold your brush upright while pressing down the bristle about in half. Start your line from left to the right and continue until the brush becomes completely out of ink. Then rinse the brush in water, fully charge the in ink, and start again. From horizontal to vertical directions and both diagonal directions about one and a half inch apart. Next, while the paper is still wet, you can add circular lines in clockwise and counterclockwise directions. Once you are done, rinse the brush, gently wipe off the excess of the water, and leave it flat on a paper towel to keep the bristle in shape. Let the paper dry. Some of your work may look really dark black now, but don't worry. Once it's dry, the ink color will turn lighter, and you will see the beautiful interactions between the crossed lines, the blurred effect showing the depth of the thin rice paper. And this is my final line practice and completely dried. As you can see, lines in different layers look like they are in a different depth of space or weaved together in the 3D space because of the very thin white cracks between the overlapped lines. These thin gaps will tell you which lines were drawn first and which were the next on the paper. When I learned about this for the first time, I was so amazed by the fact that this thin rice paper can portray the depth of space and time. This also becomes the unfortunate fact that you can't fix or hide your mistakes by adding brush strokes because the paper will tell the truth. I hope you find this practice fun and enjoy learning about this unique sensitivity of the rice paper harmonized with the sumi ink and brush rather than just practice lines. Okay, it's now your turn. I would like you to take a piece of rice paper and practice lines just like I did. And when you're done, please send me the photo of your assignment. Don't worry about your result because everybody gonna be different. So yours will be very different from what I did. And don't forget, I have done a lot before. Let me show you some examples from the previous student work.